everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's video, I thought it'd be quite fun for me to do a bit of a review of the client work I've done over the past year and to share with you some of the learnings that I've experienced while working with you, uh, to share with you some of the highlights of what it's been like to work with you. Uh, and of course, all of this will be totally anonymous. Don't worry, I won't be talking about, you know, uh, or revealing any information. I've got a couple of little cases that I might uh, bring up, but it'll be totally anonymous, so don't worry. Um, but I thought it'd just be really fun to, to sit back and review how it's been to be an astrologer over this past year. I started this channel in Feb uh, 2018 and I did do this work professionally last year under a different uh, name and I ran a different channel last year and that was really my test to see do I want to do this. So I definitely want to do this and I really hope that I can just keep this up. So me, this is what I want to do and it all looks promising in my chart, um, you know, and it's funny because I was thinking about this concept of how often do I read for myself? And I can tell you, not often. Uh, I was chatting with a friend on Skype just last week and I was explaining how I don't often look up my own chart. I do sometimes for some things, you know, and of course I've got it memorized in my head. It's the chart I know the best. But what I've discovered through being an astrologer is that there is some form of magic and alchemy and something else that happens when you officially do a reading, when you are booked, when you are asked, um, you know, the intuition starts to operate and information starts to come in and the, the, the chart animates itself in front of you and you're kind of guided as to, as to what to say. It's a really special experience when you're doing a proper professional reading for someone. And I've had um, I have had one astrological reading and I was told basically that, you know, yes, you can definitely be an astrologer. Um, and I've also had, well, I've had a human design reading now with Sandy Freshly. I've also had, I've had over the course of my life, many, many readings through all sorts, through channelers, mediums, tarot, this, that, everything, you name it. So, um, there's definitely a magic and an alchemy that happens when a reading takes place and what I tend to think um, I wrote down all these notes yesterday and look at that I'm already off my notes uh, and I'll keep an eye on the time as well what I tend to think and this is what I say to people when I do a reading for them so if you're lucky to get a um, audio reading with me I usually spend a few minutes at the start doing an introduction and part of that introduction is what I tell people is that when you're getting a reading with me, the exciting part actually isn't what I'm going to say to you. The exciting part is you reading yourself as the information comes in. And when you read yourself as the information comes in, it will highlight to you what sounds really good and what you wanted to hear. And if you hear something that you didn't quite want to hear, then that's highlighting to you maybe an area that you need to look at an area where you need to focus your free will, an area where there's work to be done. You know, maybe I give a prediction, something like, oh, you know, um, not particularly seeing marriage this year, but maybe next year will be better. And that might be devastating for you, right? Uh, you know, so if that is the case, that means, okay, there's some work to be done there. You know, why did that information come in and not feel good, um, for example? So it doesn't often happen that, um, people are, you know, upset by anything I say. But, um, but one thing that I am going to cover in this video is that if you are down about your chart or you've had these experiences where you're kind of getting information come in and you're like, oh, I didn't want to hear that, then we're going to work with that in this video. We're going to look at the third chakra. So there is uh, some work to be done with some people. And we are going to get into that. But let's go with my notes and not be off topic because I've already spoken for four minutes. Oh, no. Um, <clears throat> so highlights. This is a case that I do want to talk about. This is probably 
I will say this is probably one of the best, absolute best readings um, I've done all year. And I'm, I, I know that the person won't mind me talking about it because um, I'm not going to mention her name. I've known her for a very long time. And it was, I'm pretty sure it was a 10 year anniversary. It was an anniversary gift to herself that she um, got off addiction. She stopped addiction. I think she had various addictions, I think uh, alcoholism, I think it was, stuff like that. And she um, kicked it in a very profound way on a particular day. She remembers the day and, you know, in the 10-year anniversary celebration of that, she thought, I'm going to get a reading. And hello if you're watching, by the way. I'm sure you won't mind me mentioning this uh, as it's being done anonymously. So don't worry, no one knows. Um it was, for me, that was a terrific reading to do because it gave me a very profound learning that I want to share with you. What I discovered as I was looking at the stars as they were scattered, you know, at that time, I clicked back through the years, um, I could see the uh, Mahadasha, Antadasha that were, was running and uh, the two planetary players that were extremely, extremely prominent at that time were Rahu Venus. And it was fascinating to me because I could see that the energetic and astrological build of that time could easily have put someone into addiction, right? And this was a time that she got out of addiction. And what it kind of showed me is that sometimes we have astrological things happen where an energy is on, okay? That energy is just switched on. And with our free will, we can either go into the negative side of it right the, the negative flip side or we can flip it to the positive we can we can totally so this could have been a time where she would have become more addicted or gone deeper into addiction but no she actually used her free will and she did a total flip side reversal and was like well I'm not doing it that was fascinating to see and a real learning point for me um, that was a very significant date and um, and I know that that reading I think it, it went really well uh, for that friend of mine so um, that was a real honor to do that one and, and a reading like no other I haven't done one of those before that was a unique thing to do it's also one of the reasons why on my website it before it used to say career reading uh, but you know it's being used for all kinds of purposes so I changed it to individual reading and you can use it for you know maybe you've got a significant date like that um, for, for some type of particular event you just want to you know, I don't know, maybe gift yourself a, a session or to see what happened at that time. Why did that happen? How's my life now? That kind of thing. Uh, I did a lot of gifts for uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, mums. Um, I did one for a mum's son, which that was kind of interesting. And I wanted to bring that up. I've got a little note here because I wanted to say if you're doing this as a gift for somebody, then um, please make sure that they're really into astrology. <laughs> I knew that I had a feeling anyway that this young man wasn't particularly into astrology, didn't particularly believe in it. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't think uh, that, you know, I, I think another present would have been more suitable in that case. I think it went down well and I think it was interesting because he was called for his mum to read it so I think it was an interesting experience for at least you know one person in the family but uh, but yeah that was something I wanted to flag to just say if you are doing this as a gift make sure that that person loves astrology and is into astrology as well uh, I did a couple of childbirth readings that has been quite a theme that I've been looking at. A lot of women um, about my age, actually, I'm turning 40 next year uh, and, you know, I do work with women my age. I know all the feelings around this issue. I know what it's like to be wondering, is this on the cards for me? Uh, I know what to look for and I definitely know how to handle that. So if you are a person who's, say, for example, um, going through IVF and those kind of things and you're kind of wondering, there are things that we can look at astrologically. We can also identify um, key windows in time where you might be more fertile and things like that. So that can be a worthwhile experience, definitely. Um, one thing I wanted to say around that one was I 
have had a friend who has been trying for quite a while and she is now pregnant it's it's the most wonderful thing and, and boy was she trying I think she I don't know how many goes she gave it with with regards to IVF but she did a lot and um, when she told me about what was happening she said that she got sick and that she couldn't do the IVF and that then she said that we decided to give it one last go and we thought doesn't matter if it happens if it doesn't happen we don't we don't mind so she totally let go and the sickness as well there was something divine there gods had made her sick uh, so she was inactive she couldn't go anywhere do anything and then they finally then she got better and so you see god takes over i've seen that i've seen and i i believe in um god i believe in miracles i believe in angels i believe in free will and then I believe in astrology, right? So it's kind of like I got a lot of things that I believe in first before I even get to astrology. And as you can see, I kind of don't use it a huge amount for myself. Look at that, the time's ticking, so I'm going to move on here. Um, yeah, I've got a note here saying that most of you are operating from the heart and above. And when that's the case, um, these readings are very useful. I've had a lot of feedback telling me that people listen and re-listen. Uh, and that they kind of get things out of the reading, you know, long after it's been and done, which is um, exactly how I designed these for you. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of designed to be a one-off experience, uh, and it's a nice thing. I, I've got a couple of um, readings that I had with a psychic. I think I had one in 2006, and I went back to her in 2011. It was 2011 and when I've re-listened to those years and years later it's incredible because you see how far you've grown you see how far you've changed and you know um, yeah they're, they're great things to have these audios with you so um, most of you as I say probably as I look over the year and I've thought about wonder if I could give a percentage of who's operating out of the heart and above uh, and they kind of have a good relationship with what astrology is in their lives, I'd say that's 90 to 95% of you easily. But there's a small percentage of you who are kind of um, working more out of your lower centers and you're pulling fear, say, out of your third chakra and you're, you're kind of manifesting that or um, there's still negativity or you know stuff to come out and be dealt with and that's okay so we're going to work with that a little bit now so what I thought we could do is um so yeah as I got here notes you're probably actively manifesting your fears some of you are doing that I can see that so if I've said to you that you've got some third chakra work to do this is the video I want you to watch and listen to, to this and I'm going to go through a series of questions by Caroline Mace and we're going to have a look at this. So um, if you are a person where I've said that you've got some third chakra work to do, um, you're probably actively manifesting your fears, maybe a bit, not much, don't worry, just a little bit. <laughs> um, don't worry, and I've done all this, by the way. I've had a terrible third chakra. I have had, oh my God, I've had all, I've had to overhaul everything. I've had um, major problems and that's I think one of the one of the emails I had someone said that oh you're a really positive person and I thought that was really nice uh them to say but at the same time it's like my positivity uh has come after a lot of work and it's a lot of my perspectives in life are hard war hard fought and won like I've really um gone through so I am positive by choice believe me uh you know you give me two choices I'm choosing positive and I'm deliberately doing that um you know that's why I reach for things like God and angels and you know miracles and hey astrology as well uh, astrology has good news for me and I'll take the good news you know it's got bad news in my chart but I don't see it as bad I kind of um as well you know if you've got debilitations for example if you've got great enemy planets for example I've got uh if you've got what else could be bad uh, considered bad yeah and, and the more I read astrology books the more you find a loophole you find Nietzsche Bhangaraj yoga you find you find all kinds there's a loophole everywhere for everything so it's amazing the system you know you've really got to read a lot um, and get to know it quite deeply I keep finding loopholes as I go um, but yeah great enemy position uh, dead planets you can have a dead planet what I tend to think about those here's a positive perspective on those how about the fact that maybe especially if, it, if it's a malefic planet if it's a tough planet if it's a difficult planet 
maybe it's not going to give you as much negativity, right? Have you thought about that? You know, sometimes some of these planets, quite frankly, you want them to be knocked out and not producing much for you because, you know, maybe you've dealt with those karmas. Maybe you don't need to go through those lessons, right? There's a wisdom in everything. The universe is just so, so wise. And what I tend to think is that we're here to appreciate our chart and we're here to see the promises. What are the promises that I've come to live up to? And uh, unfortunately, this camera is on the light of life. I would have pulled it out and shown it to you. Um, but I do recommend this book a lot. I've recommended it before on the channel, Light on Life, Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda. Definitely check that out because they teach a wonderful uh, Jyotishi style of, of how to really read and interpret charts. It's an elegant art. Um, yes, there's negativity. Yes, there's bad news. But there's, um, you know, there's a maturity and an understanding, and there's a, the, you know, there's the, there's an appreciation in that book of the clever genius design of what this whole thing is. It's really, you know, it, to me, I'm in a state of wonder each time I look at a chart, and 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 that's the place to be. That that's how to look at a chart. You want to be in some. You want to be suspended in some place of wonder as you look. Um, let's get back to these third chakra people and I'm keeping an eye on the time. Look at that. The time just vanishes. Uh, the third chakra people, if, if, if I've said to you, you've got some third chakra work to do, you might be believing what I say 100%, right? Don't do that. Do not believe. You know, I'm a, a, a person on the planet, right? You've got to... Um, no horizontal energy. You want to be dealing with the divine, okay? You want to be dealing with source. You want to be, you know, and 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 I try my best to, when I do a reading, you know, I'm a messenger of the system um, and I feel like I can feel the planets. I feel like, you know, I can, you know, I, I'm connecting all the time with uh, this this beautiful sacred system. But, you know, you've got to be empowered. You've got to reference yourself first, okay? And you've got to question what comes in. Even question your birth time, right? Even question, um, how do you know? How do you know you were born at exactly that time, you know? Uh, so there's, it's a very interesting system. What I tend to think is you'll, you, when you get a resonance and you feel like, like when I had my one Vedic astrology reading where they told me that, you know, you've got a line of ancestry who've done Vedic astrology, which is true. Um, my father did charts and his father did charts and his father did them professionally even, um, whereas my dad didn't. But it, my dad drew charts all his life. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he used it for himself though. Um, but it's true, I have an entire line in, in the male line. They all, I'm, I'm sure it goes, it extends further. And uh, I was advised to, to keep going. So I, I decided, yeah, all right, I'll do it. Uh, again, time is ticking. Okay, because I really want to get to this book. So, um, yeah, okay, here's another note. Um, and, and this isn't just, this, this is a broad note that I've seen people do in other areas of life. People, some people use astrology as a language to berate themselves right, or to slam themselves or to punish themselves or oh, I'm no good or my chart's negative or whoa, all of that, right, so some of that going on. Um, some people even use astrology as a language to berate others or to, and I actually, there was a friend who I, I'm not so much spending time with anymore because um, cause this was one of the things that I found difficult, you know, he's a Vedic, he's a Western astrologer, very good Western astrologer, um, knows the language very well. But it was always complaining about this lady, Diana, and saying, oh, you know, uh, and that's a different name, don't worry. Um, and, and, and always saying, that, oh, she's got Saturn Square Mars or something like that, I don't know, the Western language. And he was saying, oh, she's got this. And it was like, whoa, 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 you can't, you can't do that. You can't just say, oh, she's got this placement, so let's throw her in the bin. You know, it, like, that used to just, oh, that didn't sit well with me. It, this is not an extravagant language to to just spew out our negativity, right? And we have to remember, and this is an Eckhart Tolle teaching, we have to remember that the chart is different to the life. They're two different things. You can never confuse the two, right? Getting, 
astrology, getting your relationship with astrology right is very important. And I might do some, I will do more videos about this kind of thing. Don't worry, stick around on this channel. I will talk about all this stuff in depth. Um, but I want to get to this book. So I can see the time is ticking. So um, let's, be, let's not be using astrology as a language to berate ourselves or others. Okay, We're all human beings. We're all vital. We're all necessary. We're all important. We're all, we all have come to do some important work. And, um, you know, we've just got to remember that. And, and ourselves, right? You've got to remember that about yourself. You've got to remember that, you know, and believe me, I've got tough things in my charts. But, you know, I'm learning to work with them and love them and appreciate them. And that's, that's really important. Uh, okay, so, ah, uh, yes. And the other thing about third chakra work is if your third chakra is slightly weak and uh, some of you, it's, it's weak and some of you it's work in overtime, okay? So there's some of you maybe, you know, um, <laughs> Prone to uh, prone to attack. So, <laughs> hello, Mars Ketu. We've had a lot of that over the last year, haven't we? That's a 2018 in review. We have had, and I have had uh, experiences of that. Now, um, outsourcing your personal decision making power. So, what is going on if you if you've got an issue with third chakra, especially if you're deficient, you're probably going to be outsourcing your personal decision making power to other people, other people's opinions, uh, to society. To culture, to systems like astrology. Okay, you're outsourcing your decision making power to a system like astrology. What I want to tell you is take your power back. Okay, because you can make anything in your life, you can do anything in your life, you can achieve anything, you can use your free will, you can work with the chakra system, you can clean up your whole field, and you can manifest and create and do and do and do. And where did I get all this information from? I got it from a wonderful woman called Caroline Mace. I've this is a very old book, you can see I bought it second hand. Someone spilt water on it. Uh, you know, I a lot of my books I buy second hand. Uh, they're very cheap on Amazon. They're wonderful, and um, this is this is just a sensational book. And I've read and reread it, and I, I sincerely recommend it to everybody. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you her third chakra questions. And now the camera might fall over at any moment now, but we're going to go through the last uh, part of each chakra chapter. She I should probably pronounce it chakra, shouldn't I? I will. I know. I, I my pronunciation is needs work. I need to do some lessons with Simon Chukoisky. Ch Chukoisky, he's a good one to teach people who've grown up learning. Like because uh, I just grew up in Australia, so my uh, my pronunciation isn't it, it's okay. All right. So uh, third chakra chakra. So at the end of um, the chapter, the third chakra, uh, we have questions for self-examination. So here we go, guys. Number one. Now, this is the kind of thing that you might want to get a pen and paper and look, the video might stop at some point. So um, I'll just keep going and when it gets cut, we'll, we'll crack on. But what, what I want you to do here is this might be, you might want a pen and paper and you might want to jot down you know, press pause and jot down your interpretations or what's going on for you. The importance of writing. I was thinking about this that this morning that I wanted to include this in this video. That's an alchemical thing as well. Use your hand. Don't do it on a computer. Don't do it on a phone. Use your hand. Use a pen or a pencil, whatever thing you like. But bringing things from your brain through your arm to the paper and putting it on paper is really important and because it's the end of the year now's a really good time to sit down as an exercise and if you're angry and if you have negativity and if you have stuff then believe me I'm going to be doing this at some point uh, we've all got stuff and uh, you know no matter how much work you've done we've always stuff builds up so write it on a piece of paper and then tear it up and put it in the bin or, you know, I listened to Christiane Northrup today and she was saying, drown it in the river. And I thought, oh, I haven't done that one before. I have gone to a forest and burnt stuff. That's quite fun. But again, uh, especially if you're living in Australia, don't do that. Um, if you're living somewhere here, like in the United Kingdom, it's uh, a bit safer. But I actually held a fire ceremony one time in the woods and all these, oh my God, that was such a beautiful thing to do. And all these, apologies for that, guys. The 
camera just got cut as it does. My regular viewers will know that this is what happens at about the 24 minute mark. Uh, it's just part of the fun, isn't it? And I'm just gonna make sure that my microphone is clipped on because I just did this end bit, but um, the microphone wasn't clipped on. So it's all looking like it's working. So how about we delve into those questions? I think where the video got cut when I was I talking about a fire ceremony that I led a fire ceremony and there were all these women that came and we put stuff we wrote down now I don't know whatever we wanted to put into the fire and we another story for another time I got a lot of stories I could talk for days days and days but I won't uh, let's get into this. So the book I'm quoting from, guys, again, is Anatomy of the Spirit. It's a New York Times bestselling book, The Seven Stages of Power and Healing by Caroline Mace. Um, she has a PhD uh, from, where would that be from? I don't know, but she is sensational. I've consumed, I've read and reread this book so many times. Um, I've read all of her books. I'm pretty sure all of them. Everything she's ever published. I just, wow, um, what a what a person. So I do recommend her, and especially if you're interested in the chakra system, if you're interested in learning your how your energy uh, field works, I, I strongly recommend doing all this work. But if, say, for example, I've done a reading for you, and either a written reading or um, an individual reading or in the past when it was called a career reading or whatever. If I've done any form of reading for you and I've said to you, you need to do a bit of third chakra work, then this is what I'm talking about. And uh, what Caroline does is at the end of each chapter where she's written about a chakra, she's explained how it operates in your life and what its function is and what it's doing. At the end of that chapter, she'll put questions for self-examination. And as you go through these questions, you will be alerted to where your third chakra is operational and healthy, and you'll be alerted to where you need to do some work. And what kind of work do you need to do? Again, you'll be guided. Tune in, ask for guidance, ask for help with that area of your life, and you will be shown the way. Okay, and this is all work that you can do on your own. And you can do it. You don't have to work with anyone. You don't. Uh, you know, I, I tend to think that the best work we do is in the privacy of our own minds, actually. And you know, we do have witnesses, even when we're just working in the privacy of our own mind, and we're meditating and we're reflecting and we're being honest with ourselves. Guess who is witness to that? Uh, you know, the gods are witness to that. Angels are witness to that. The planets are witness to that. Anyone you know and have loved and who's crossed over, they're all watching you, guiding you, your ancestors, you know. They're all cheering you on because we've all been given some portion of work to do in our lives. We've all been given challenges. Uh, you know, I'm amazed. One of the other things actually that I didn't mention in this um, when I was reflecting over all my client work this year is I'm, I'm always amazed when people ask, they ask me, um, why did I, why do, why have I had to suffer? And I, I find it amazing that they ask me because I'm a person on the planet who suffers. You know what I mean? I'm not like, um, you know, that's, that's a question for some higher power, really. I, I, I don't know. But, I, you know, having read and, and studied extensively suffering and, uh, and obviously experienced it and, and learned how to deal with it and all that, you know, sure, I've got, um, I can give you my perspective and I can give you what I think, but um, that is really, you know, I, yeah, that, that's a very interesting question. And um, I actually, m well, my perspective on it is I actually think we come for the suffering, which is not what people want to hear when they ask me that question. They're like, I don't want to hear that. Uh, but no, truly, I, I kind of think that we we sort of do because from what I've read and understand of that other side, which is perpetual bliss and, you know, um, a kind of unimaginable beauty that you can't put into words is on that other side. It's like I, I would imagine that that would get boring. <laughs> you kind of want to um, go somewhere different and, and, and earth is somewhere different. 
you know, um, it's a very unique experience, the experience of linear time. Wow, what a thing, huh? Um, the experience of forgetting. You know, I think we come for these things. I think we come for the experience of forgetting. Um, we come to be surprised, uh, delighted and surprised. Sure, we come for suffering, but that's part of the contrast. Otherwise, where would the delight come from? You know, and you listen to Sister Wendy and she talks about our duty for delight, our duty to delight, that we, you know, it's our duty to choose the positive. Did I say in the previous video something about someone saying that I'm positive and that I actually, you know, I, I didn't drop out of the sky that way, believe me. You know, it might seem that way, but um, but anyway, uh, let's get on with this. So I've already burnt a few minutes here and I haven't even gotten to the questions. All right, so now, as I say, pen and paper, you might want to ponder, you might want to reflect, you might want to hit the pause button. If I've asked a question and you think, whoa, hit the pause button, have a little reflect, okay, and then hit play digest these slowly okay so questions for self-examination one do you like yourself such a big question and I can't look even just number one even just question number one I mean I've had a huge amount of third chakra work to do and I for the longest time since I was a child teenage years right through to mid-20s even early 30s I mean god I struggled with that question big time uh, do you like yourself? If not, what don't you like about yourself and why? For me, uh, meeting Louise Hay helped me turn that around. That was in 2006. And that was, I did, I did a lot of her work in 2009, so I'd probably pin it at 2009. This started to turn around for me then. So number one, do you like yourself? If not, what don't you like about yourself and why? Are you actively working to change the things about yourself that you don't like? Okay, so that's one. Two, are you honest? Do you sometimes misrepresent the truth? If so, why? That's number two, are you honest? Guess who wants, which planet wants this one to be really good? Saturn. Saturn wants you to be honest, wants you to be honest with yourself especially. Sometimes it's not easy to do. It's a very big question. Believe me, we grapple with all these things for all our lives as well. You know, no one's ever perfect on these. Um, so as you go through, as we go through these questions, know that there are no right or wrong answers. Okay, the idea is reflection, meditation, mull it over in your mind. You'll experience growth as you reflect on these, and you'll see areas where you can use your free will to to improve things okay uh, so that's number two three are you critical of others do you need to blame others as a way of protecting yourself wow that's a big question four are you able to admit it when you are wrong are you open to feedback from other people about yourself that's a really big question as well that's a good one five do you need the approval of others? If so, why? That one is really what I was stating in my notes where I said, are you outsourcing your personal decision-making power, your third chakra power, are you outsourcing you know, your personal decision-making power to other people, other people's opinions, society, culture, or systems like astrology, right? That's huge. I want you to take your power back. From all of these places, take your power back from other people, from other people's opinions, from society, from culture, from systems like astrology. If there's something that you want to do, if there's something that you want to achieve, you can be like, well, astrology says it's not going to happen, but guess what? I say it's going to happen. Right? That's personal power. You know, if you've got abundant, beautiful third chakra power that's healthy, you can manifest what you want. You really can. You can create amazing things. And you don't need the permission of a chart or a parent or an astrologer or anybody. You can do it, right? That's really big. Um, Edgar Casey was big on that. He was, you know, was able to tap into eternal wisdom and all that kind of thing under hypnosis, I think. And uh, he said the system of astrology is correct. It's about a sign behind. Sidereal Vedic. And he said, um, what else did he say? 
that if there's something you really want to do, you can do it. You can use your thought and free will power and, and everything that you've got. You can do it. You're very powerful. So I, I definitely believe in that. For me, astrology is like it gives me a weather report. But, you know, when it's raining, I still go out and I still have a smile on my face. And that's in my life too. Sometimes there's bad weather, you know, but I, I can still enjoy myself. And that's what astrology is, is, is teaching me. What do we get up to there? So we got up to do you need the approval of others? If so, why? It's a very critical third chakra question that. Uh, six, do you consider yourself strong or weak? Yeah, so now we're getting into some Mars energy here. Courage, right? So are you afraid of taking care of yourself? Seven, have you ever allowed yourself to be in a relationship with a person you didn't really love, but it seemed better than being alone? How interesting. Eight, do you respect yourself? Can you decide to make changes in your lifestyle and then stick to your commitment? All right, commitment. I always tend to think commitment is a very seventh house sort of a thing. Um, and again, Saturnian, because Saturn does very well in that seventh house. Nine, are you afraid of responsibility? Or do you feel responsible for everything and everyone? Now, that's a really good question there to see if your third chakra is overpowering. By the way, if you can hear that siren, apologies for that. Um, do you feel responsible for everything and everyone? So is your third chakra working overtime? Are you, is it too, uh, is it over-functioning? And that's, that's definitely... That's definitely a Harriet Lerner term. She's a psychiatrist and she talks about overfunctioning and underfunctioning. People who overfunction will be overly responsible for everybody because it's a way of hiding from their own stuff and they're not dealing with their own stuff. And I know a person who is, she's a genius with everyone else. She's basically a counselor for everybody. And um, she's got a degree in psychology and she, yeah, she's, she's very good at pinpointing everybody. Yet uh, she's, she's definitely got some things of her own that she's really not looking at at all. So that's, that's important. And number 10, finally, I see the time's ticking, so I'm going to move on. Uh, are you continually wishing your life were different? If so, that's a big one. People, a lot of people come to astrology because of this. Are you continually wishing your life were different? If so, are you doing anything to change it? Or have you resigned yourself to the situation? And that's interesting. Have you resigned yourself to the situation? We don't particularly want to resign ourselves. That's, that's a bit of a negative sort of energy. We want to accept. We want to find surrender sometimes um, as a way of freeing up energy. So, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, this is the book, Anatomy and the Spirit. Terrific book. I hope you've enjoyed that review of... Um, client work and things that I've learned over the past year of working with you guys it has been an absolute pleasure and delight and joy to do this work I just love it and um, you know I want to thank everybody who comes to this channel I want to thank everyone who interacts of course I want to thank all the people that you know I've worked with and I've learned and grown as a result of doing this work um, and you know I've definitely had some good feedback from some of you saying that um, you've learned and grown uh, as a result of, of having a reading so that's wonderful and I will be putting together um, tomorrow we'll be putting together we're going to have a little look at 2019 January 2019 so do stay tuned for that and yeah I think that's just about it so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time